Okay, so welcome everybody. Thank you for uh, your patience, and uh, it's great to have everyone with us today. I'm Jason Gumpert from msdynamicsworld.com, and uh, we're here for a session all about EDI integration best practices. Uh, our, pre our presenter today is Glenn McPeak. It's great to have him back with us today. Just a, a couple notes as we get started. Please do know that uh, we do have we do welcome your questions. Uh, please look for the Q and A block. You should see to the right uh, of the main presentation area. If you don't see the Q and A, uh, look for a question mark icon in the upper right to enable it. Uh, I know Glenn uh, will be leaving time at the end of the session uh, for your questions. So without any further um, delays, I'm going to hand things over uh, to Glenn McPeak. Thank you very much, Jason, and I appreciate everyone taking time today to um, give me an opportunity to share a little bit of information that I've gathered over the last um, 14 or so years uh, integrating data, particularly business transactional data, also known as VI, with the Dynamics AX and Dynamics 365 for operations platforms. So I've been um, working in the ERP space, implementing systems, uh, overseeing projects of, uh, of ERP platforms. So when I encountered uh, the Dynamics AX product many years ago, I was very excited about what I've seen. And so I um, embarked on my career to uh, work with, with such platforms. And now that I've uh, worked in, with companies in hundreds of uh, EDI-related projects with that platform, I feel like I'm in a good position to share with you what, what we've learned over the years in terms of what constitutes best practices with the uh, Dynamics AX and 365 platforms. So what I plan to cover today is uh, to talk about something called the value chain and integrating data in and out of the Dynamics AX and D365 platforms related to the entire value chain. Now, most folks are more familiar with the, with the term supply chain, but supply chain really is limited to just the uh, procurement, the, the manufacture, the contracting of, uh, of the creation of goods, the distribution of goods, delivery, et cetera. Uh, value chain gets involved other types of organizations such as uh, banks and finance organizations and other things that are an important part of the business execution for a lot of companies, but uh, it goes beyond just your basic supply chain. And as far as getting the value chain integrated into the Dynamics platform back end, um, there's a number of challenges. And I think it's important to understand what those challenges are in order to understand what uh, best practices mean. And so once I set the stage, I'm going to talk about those best practices that really provide long-term success. And I'm not talking um, just a few years. I'm talking. Um, 10 to 20 years, which we have customers that have been running our platform actually uh, since the 1990s. So um, our first customer we brought on in 1996, so 22 years of uh, success integrating EDI data into their ERP platform. And then I'm going to provide a demonstration of our platform and what is possible with the Dynamics uh, AX and D. 365 platforms, and then as um, Jason just mentioned, some time for questions and answers. So what is integration of the value chain all about? And, you know, as I said before, what is really uh, the ideal objective is to have all of your business interactions occurring electronically where we eliminate the data entry processes from running an ERP system wherever possible. So um, if you think about everything from uh, receiving payment information, 
from from the bank to sending orders to a to a supplier or a request for a quote to a trading network or responding to a <clears throat> an inquiry from uh, one of your customers in terms of inventory availability or <clears throat> in terms of status on an order. Being able to respond and to interact with different organizations electronically is, is what we think is the ultimate objective. And as I said before, there's a number of challenges that go along with it. So <clears throat> if you look at it from its pure sense, what we have are ERP systems like Dynamics talking to other ERP systems, which could be Oracle, it could be SAP, it could be a Sage ERP platform, or it could be something completely custom written by your partner. And you don't know who your partner is ultimately are going to be and what type of ERP systems that they're going to be running on their back end. But um, to get these disparate systems talking to each other is the ideal state and, of course, a major challenge. So ultimately, a lot of companies that we talk to, um, both in, inside our industry and outside, they, they say EDI, yeah, it's all, it's all standards and so forth. But in reality, EDI could be any data format, and they don't necessarily have to be standards. They could be spreadsheets. They could be uh, flat file CSVs any type of file format. So it really doesn't matter uh, what the format is. It's the idea that we're taking these business transactions and we're getting them seamlessly into the back-end platform and then taking the transactions and the data that's relevant from the Dynamics platform and getting it to the partners the way that they need or want it. And when you achieve true automation and true integration of, of your business and the, and the back-end platform with your partners, it, it becomes truly transformational organizationally because what you do is you take people out of um, the dull mundane and, and certainly uh, no value added work of doing data entry processing into screens. And you're enabling them to free themselves from those tasks and start uh, solving real business problems and delivering value to your customers and into your business so they can think instead of just uh, click on a keyboard all day, which unfortunately I think too many of us do today. So the value chain um, partner relationships that can exist are, you know, really encapsulated in this diagram. And it's basically going beyond your suppliers and your and your warehouse partners and your customers. But again, it could be dealing with uh, finance companies like banks and factors and uh, government custom agencies, et cetera, getting all the, all the different uh, endpoints that data might come from and go to within your business in and out of the Dynamics platform. So getting there, though, has challenges. And those challenges can be grouped into three categories. The first is uh, the business challenges, which is that each business, yours included, has business rules. Some of those rules may come from the ERP system. And some of those rules come from within your organization and how you want to run your business and what constitutes internal controls and efficiencies and makes your organization different. Um, the other part of a business integration challenge is that your partners may do things a lot differently than what you think would make sense for your, you know, in, in the context of your business, but may make perfect sense to them. And even though you may have, um, you know, one customer that does things one way, doesn't mean your next customer is going to be doing it the same way. And so the unexpected is something that really needs to be expected when you're undertaking these types of things. And then finally, when it comes to your own environment, 
uh, very few AX companies run without customizations. And for the EDI solution, um, this, the system should honor the customizations as opposed to add on to the customizations and add into more complexity. That becomes, when you try to add into the complexity, you're not really solving the problem, but you're contributing to the problem. When it comes to data, the challenges include cross-references, you know, relating what your partners view their, you know, their items, their delivery locations, their, uh, their data, their terms, et cetera, compared to what you've named them inside of your own system. Um, a lot of partners will send data that links back into their internal systems and validates and, and connects the dots and the transactions in these business relationships. So turnaround data is a, an important part of it and can be a big challenge and drive a lot of customizations. Um, inconsistencies in data, you know, not all companies are do it well or, or do it um, anywhere near as well as your company might. And so you've got to be ready for inconsistencies in that data. And then unpredictability in the way that partners want to format data. Um, maybe a single transaction is in two or three different data files and they have to be um, consistent but yet not in the same uh, physical location. So uh, unpredictability in, in the format and how they want that data delivered, it could be uh, an unusual web service, it could be through um, a special communications protocol that can be challenging. So all these add up to uh, difficulties. And then when it comes to your partners and how it relates into your ERP system, what you want, um, you know, what ultimately you have to deal with is, you know, how does a location or a site ID inside of, say, uh, D365 relate to your to your carrier or relates to your uh, logistics partner that those goods actually reside in someone else's facilities and that they need to be, um, that any transactions relate to them have to be uh, identified, delivered, integrated properly and so forth. So, um, I mean, that's just one example, uh, customers and, and partners and how you set up uh, your relationships with the customer for example, their de delivery locations, they could be separate customers in your system or they could be actually just plain addresses under a single customer. So getting those relationships defined and working properly can be a big challenge. And then what your partners can do to um, your organization is expect more. Do more types of uh, electronic integrations which keep escalating the bar to to accommodate um, things that could be beneficial to you, but also could be a big burden on your ERP implementation. So with that background, what I hope to share uh, quickly are some of what we see as 10 best practices for integrating um, your Dynamics AX and 365 uh, with your supply chain and your value chain. So first and foremost, and, and it's some, you know, a critical part of our messaging is to not customize Dynamics for EDI. Now, I've been working with EDI since 2004, uh, but I've been working with Dynamics AX since 1999. And what excited me about it when I first encountered it was the ability to change it to do whatever we wanted it to do on behalf of customers. And that's a very powerful thing, but it's also a dangerous thing as well. And I soon realized that adding more and more customizations into the platform isn't necessarily the best approach. And when it comes to EDI and the unpredictable nature of it, uh, it becomes even more complex. And so we engaged in, in projects with heavy customizations and our customers were stuck on you know, version 2.1 and then they they 
they couldn't get to 2.5 and they couldn't get to 3 and 4 and on and on. And so I came to realize that the less customization, the better. And EDI can really drive heavy and complex customization as you're trying to build out business rules and um, handle the turnaround data and all the um, peculiar things that can come up, in, you know, when dealing with EDI integrated into it. So, so number one, we don't think customization is, is best practice to handle EDI. Now, if you're engaging in this in this transformation of your business to be more electronically connected with your uh, partners, when you go down that road, there's sometimes a choice, and that choice is what data format are we going to use? So I've seen companies uh, say, well, you know, we don't know what data format to use, so let's use the schema from AX, like, for example, from the application integration framework. And that, that schema is actually uh, a, a custom schema. It's not recognized as a standard. But there are standards out there, and I, you can see some of them here on the screen. And those are fairly universal, and a lot of companies can support those types of schemes. And if you don't want to do, quote, you know, traditional batch EDI type uh, processing, CXML is an option that can be implemented through web service and real time uh, integration, you know, but all these have advantages and disadvantages. But uh, again, if you're, if you're deciding on a format, it's best to work with something that's standardized in the industry. It's a lot less expensive to implement and higher probability that your partners can support it. A lot of companies go into their EDI initiatives thinking that it's not going to be a big deal and that um, it's not going to be that expensive. But the cost of ownership can be hidden from view, um, and they could be the cost of uh, endless customizations and the maintenance of those customizations and the upgrade of those customizations. It could be the cost of, of uh, transactional uh, data, so you may say, okay, well, we're going to start this process. We've got a customer. They demand it. It's going to cost us, you know, 200 euros a month to do it. Um, you know, with the transaction fees, not such a big deal. But as you, you know, start expanding your footprint, maybe working with other customers, your suppliers, your um, you know, your warehouse in uh, South America, you could start to see those costs start to ramp up dramatically to um, thousands and tens of thousands of um, euros per month. And so um, we see a lot of companies that, you know, are dismayed at, at where they started at and where they came to. So it's good to look into the future and think about your cost of ownership when evaluating solutions. A lot of companies, organizations, don't think about the future when it comes to scalability, and that um, they'll write a custom uh, one-off for, for one partner and then realize it doesn't work for another and then have to create something else and then keep building more and more you know, components, bringing in more and more uh, ETL solutions, you know, like BizTalk and, um, or translators and so forth, and try to build this whole complex infrastructure to support something that um, eventually becomes untenable. There are organizations that promote their their products as solving the EDI dilemma. So, for example, you know, there's uh, organizations like Boomi and um, even Microsoft with uh, some of their uh, products like Logic Apps and with uh, BizTalk that are really more tool sets where you have to build the integration where you have to build the maps, that you have to build the, the connection points and then maintain them going on. 
going forward. So yes, while they may handle EDI data and they give you the ability to do it, you've got to create it versus options that are true solutions. And you just have to decide whether or not building a solution is what is your, in your company's best interest or to take something that's available um, off the shelf so that that build versus buy decision. But it's important to start by understanding what what, so, what offerings are tools versus what are solutions. A lot of the projects that we get involved in are with organizations that have brought in other parties who, quote, no EDI, and they don't really understand the Dynamics platform. And so they build solutions that are almost like Rube uh, Goldberg uh, contraptions that, that make it very hard for them to maintain it, it's expensive, and they um, haven't really, you know, thought about where they're going, what they're doing, and it, it doesn't scale in terms of uh, support and so forth. So it's important to find experts to work with you on your, you know, e-commerce integration initiatives. Microsoft knows that a lot of organizations have invested in and options and solutions surrounding their products that aren't necessarily uh, adopting best practices. So a number of years ago, they implemented a program to certify solutions as following best practices with, with their platforms. So they implemented a very rigorous testing process. They required uh, uh, references to be furnished. They validated the references uh, to make sure that the solution did work, that um, companies could progress with those uh, solutions in place, and they developed the Certified for Microsoft Dynamics program. So look for solutions that hold those certifications as a first choice, and um, that will keep you aligned with best practice. There are organizations that will, quote, solve the EDI challenges by providing you with a means to enter data into web screens. And it's true that that will, that will solve the problem for meeting compliance, but it introduces a new uh, problem. And that problem is double entry of data. And the more times you enter the same data into any system, you're going to produce more errors, and certainly you're going to increase your overhead. Today, there's strong opportunities to really gain efficiencies and by integrating ERP system among different uh, parties that are doing business together. And to really take advantage of those opportunities, you've got to have strong integration and it's got to be able to touch many points, and it's got to have the sophistication to get it from end to end. And so we think that when you look at your initiative, especially if you take a step back and do big picture, the cost of people entering data into screens, et cetera, that you'll realize that it's important that it's got to be very broad, very deep, and of course performance has got to be a factor. And not all organizations um, <clears throat> want to have someone else in control of their data, moving their data, manipulating their data, so they want to be able to take on that responsibility themselves, and they invest in the personnel and the capabilities to get it. Other organizations aren't, um, aren't equipped for that task. So, um, and some organizations may begin their initiative with one idea in mind and then realize that maybe that's not the right model for them. So it's good to find solutions that remain and give you the flexibility to 
figure out what is best for your organization so that you're not locked into one way of doing things and then having to do a complete replacement if you decide that there's a different path that would be better for your organization. And then finally, um, as a best practice, realize that full automation, as I said at the beginning, can be transformational for, for the organization. And again, taking people out of the equation of the mundane day in, day out process of exchanging business transactions uh, between your organization and the outside world and, and maybe even sister companies and um, other types of touch points, um, integration touch points. Once you get all that working, it really changes the nature of how you approach your business and your ability to scale the business and draw down your cost of, of execution and making you a more competitive uh, organization. So as promised at the beginning, I'm going to uh, take a few moments and just take you through what um, a truly integrated solution that does not customize the Dynamics platform can look like and uh, how automated these types of systems can be. What you're looking at is our platform, um, Vantage Point EEI for Dynamics, and it's really intended to provide everything that an organization would ever need in terms of connecting those different types of partners we talked about earlier and align itself with the typical processes that you see in an ERP implementation, such as with uh, Dynamics. AX and D365. And if you notice the menu bars on the left-hand side, you start to see the, the DNA of how the system is architected and how it aligns to very common uh, business transaction process cycles, such as the quote to cash process. So that's the customer-facing process of responding to an inquiry, you know, a quotation request through the purchase order process, through the shipment, through the invoicing process, etc. The procure to pay is the supplier facing. Logistics and transportation is dealing with the, the transport of goods, the um, storage, and then the distribution of it. For organizations that exist in the automotive supply chain. We've got a full solution for those types of companies because the business practices and processes in those industries are, are in that industry is, is unique. And then um, product management, so the ability to exchange data with partners, um, including suppliers, third-party logistics, as well as uh, your customers. So all these uh, areas are covered. Now, um, a typical demonstration could be shown by, in my demo flow, in my favorites area, and the system allows you to define a rules-based user experience so that uh, they only see the things that they need. But our objective is to make everything 100% lights out automated with um, business users only responding to discrepancies and with errors only when they occur. And we accomplish that through automation. In our automation solution, we call our EDI workflow scheduler, which really explains the idea behind it, the ability to take tasks that can be executed within the Vantage Point platform. So if we go back to um, the user interface that we had before, you see uh, processes in my demonstration where I'm going to connect to an external environment, get data, download it, 
that's also where I would push data back to um, to my partners. The send purchase orders to Dynamics 365, which would in turn create a sales order in my demonstration, and then handle the purchase order acknowledgement process, you know, so retrieve that data from D365, send it out to the partners. And <laughs> as you start looking at these choices, you um, hopefully realize that we break down each step in a in a true process flow into individual component tasks. And those tasks can be automated here. So everything that you can do in Vantage Point, you can select, make part of your process flow, and then either schedule it or have it run based on an event occurring. So it's not just scheduling, but also event-driven. And you can come up with any sort of business scheduling that you can think of, you know, time scheduling. So it's a very simple concept. And what I'm going to do in a moment <coughs> is I'm going to retrieve data from my business, from my partner. My demonstration is going to be Amazon UK. So I'm going to create a new sales order. Right now, my most current one is uh, 1015. And in a moment, when I turn on my automation system, it's going to download and create a new order. Now, this system is normally running 100% of the time, evaluating schedules, determining what needs to be done based on your definition. You tell it what to do and when to do it. And so once it's up and running, which it normally is, you know, 24-7, it's going to go about the, the task. And it's going to do things such as send out message alerts. And what you'll see are uh, messages coming through both success and failure. So uh, you can see I just received an email, and I'm going to see more in a, in a couple of moments. And as well as um, transmitting data in and out of the system. So in a moment when this process, the inbound PO process completes, I'm going to see a new sales order in my grid inside of D365. And my system is running a little slow this morning. Should be done momentarily. Okay, so it's completed. And if I hit the refresh button, I should have a new order, and I do, 1016. And the requisition number that I signed for this <coughs> demonstration is MSDW from MS Dynamics World, June 5th, which is today's date, 2018. And what I've done is I've downloaded a purchase order, a real Amazon purchase order that came in a, in my case, an Edifact format. And I can link out to the data that resides inside of Vantage Point in one click. And, and this link that I just hit is just a very simple six-line uh, piece of code that just opens up a URL back out to the Vantage Point system. And you get the opportunity to look at the real data behind the scenes. So as you look at this, um, and if you're not familiar with this type of data, it's very cryptic looking. And it ultimately doesn't have a lot of data in it that 
you know, is um, <clears throat> that you could just plug and play into a into a sales order. In most manual environments, you take documents with more information, but still someone has to go through and say, okay, what are they trying to order? What are they trying to say? Does it maintain our business rules? So they might they might have to order in lots of 100, and now they're trying to order 150, and that doesn't uh, comport with the way we want to do our business. So Vantage Point does all those things. It replaces the human process. It identifies those exceptions, and it takes action and alerts people. So again, you know, transformational. If you're not familiar or comfortable with the data, you can hit the report button, and now you get the same data in a nicely formatted uh, document. So this is the same data, but now explained in a language that people can understand. So I'm going to come back to Dynamics uh, D365, and I'm going to go through a simple fulfillment process where I'm going to generate a, a confirmation, which will trigger an acknowledgment of the order, a detailed acknowledgment, to go back to my partner. So in a lot of organizations that don't have this type of electronic integration between parties, uh, oftentimes orders are, are made, but with no formalized confirmation and then integration back into the ERP system to make sure that what we have requested is actually going to happen and that they're our supplier's intention to make it happen. So that's a real big value to integrating your business and your value chain. So I'm also going to generate a picking list. The picking list pr process is going to drive a request for my third-party warehouse to um, ship this order out to my partner, Amazon. And I'm going to make believe that I've received back the confirmation of shipment, which we would normally integrate and update. And this type of demonstration is actually great for companies that do a lot of drop ship, because this is exactly how many drop ship scenarios work. And um, so I've done that process. The packing slip is going to drive a ship knot. Notice, in my case, a dispatch advice out to my partner. And then finally, I'm going to generate an invoice. And the invoice I'm going to print to the screen so that we can relate the invoice that we're going to see on the screen to the data that's going to be produced by Vantage Point. And Vantage Point is proactively watching D365. And when it sees a transaction that is relevant, it goes and plucks it out of the system, brings it into the Vantage Point platform, and then transforms it into the data that the partner is requesting. And when I come back to the TLE screen, you start to see that. So what I just did was I hit the refresh button, because now we're seeing more transactions. And if you look at this, um, this description up here, Transaction Lifecycle Explorer, it starts to make sense in the context of the flow menu I saw, that I showed you before, which is quote to cash. And the idea that these transactions all belong together and it's quite useful to be able to see them all on the screen, see when things happen, when we received orders, when they were integrated, when we retrieved those, that data back from P365, when it was transmitted out, et cetera. And then the ability to actually look at the, the data that was generated. 
whether or not that information was confirmed. So FA status column stands for the um, functional acknowledgement that a partner would send when they receive data from you. So it reconciles that information. Of course, if we want to see what that what that data really meant, so we can speak intelligently without being experts in data formats, we get a nicely formatted report. And of course, we're able to reconcile the, the acknowledgments. If errors occur during the process, so let's say they, they send you an EAN value that doesn't conform with the rules of an EAN or that doesn't match up with any of your products, there an error would be generated. You'd see a, a different type of icon in the error log column. And it will give you the instructions you need to fix that issue, which can oftentimes be um, just adding data into Dynamics 365. And you have the ability to, to um, implement your own business processes, your standard operating procedures, into the error messaging system in Vantage Point so that your team knows how to deal with these issues. And when they do and, and you have a transaction uh, <clears throat> that needs to be reprocessed, there's a retry um, icon that appears for transactions that are in a held state with errors that they can just hit the retry button. So you've got everything you need. You don't, you get it in one click from Dynamics 365, again here. So if you got a message from into your Outlook mailbox, as an example, just one of the ways that we can deliver notifications, you can take action on it inside of D365 reprocess so that you don't have to go through it. Um, these are examples of reports that can be proactively distributed to the, the people that need it. I'm going to open up one of these reports because it can be quite valuable. In this case, this is a reconciliation report for outbound advanced ship notices, something that's often uh, very critical to our customers that they want to make sure that the ship notices arrived at the, with their partners and that they acknowledge it back um, that they've received it because if they haven't received it, that could ultimately be your problem, whether or not you transmitted it successfully or not. So we're always watching the system, letting your knowledge workers know that there could be an issue so that they can react and address those issues without um, any sort of delay and avoid, you know, potential disasters before they become disasters. So that was my uh, brief demonstration of integrated EDI without uh, any customizations and dynamics. And so um, if you want to learn more, here's um, our contact information. And with that, uh, Jason, I'd like to open up the floor to questions. All right. Thank you, Glenn. And uh, so to everyone in the audience, please do enter any additional questions you have now. Uh, we do have a couple that have come in already, and uh, we can start getting to those. Okay. So the first question um, is asking, we already have a solution in place in AX2012 that we want to replace. Um, can we use your system while the other system is running so we can phase it in rather than replace all at once? Okay, the answer to that is that yes, you can. Uh, the system is designed to have, you know, a zero footprint, so it's not going to interfere with existing systems and processes, and um, it's just a matter of uh, planning process to get the, the system implemented. 
which, by the way, um, I'm not sure the, the context of that question exactly, but we do have a lot of organizations who are moving to Dynamics 365, and, you know, EDI could be a, a fairly large uh, footprint for them. And we've found that it's, that in a lot of cases, it's easier to switch EDI onto Vantage Point first and then go to D365 because it's one less you know, major change that's happening in their upgrade project. So that's just a side note. Uh, and there's a follow-up to that one. Um, if we wanted to migrate to Dynamics 365, is it better to move to, Dy to Dynamics 365 and then replace EDI? Well, I can't say for sure that uh, in every case what is ultimately the best, but I think in a lot of cases it does make sense to reduce that kind of big bang, go live, um, and do it in a phased manner. So the probably the, the safest phased manner in, in some cases is to uh, switch out to EDI first and then switch the ERP afterwards. Uh, someone would like to know, do you offer support in the European time zone? Time zones. Yes. Yes, absolutely. We have a team in Europe as well as um, uh, support centers in in Asia and North America, and that um, not only covers the European time zone but also 24 hours a day. Uh, if we want to run uh, our system on prem and then move to the cloud later, is that possible? Uh, the answer is absolutely. Um, there's flexibility in the way it's deployed, and and moving to the cloud is a, a very simple process. All right, great. Uh, let me make a final call for questions here. Um, we have one more to go at this point. Uh, the last one that I have here, uh, can we do our own mapping? Uh, the answer is that, you know, as I mentioned earlier in the in the uh, presentation uh, flexibility in terms of business model means that organizations that let's say would like to maintain their own maps would like to uh, create their own integrations so forth we will uh, furnish the same tools that our team uses and show uh, you how to use them um, both on both up front and ongoing so we make sure that uh, you keep evolving your skill set and your, your knowledge. And uh, so, yes, you can do your own mapping and, and do your own uh, integrations. A couple more questions have come in. Um, does any part of the tool run inside of Dynamics 365, or is it just using standard D365 import-export methods to access the system? It, it's using standard Dynamics uh, functionality. So. Um, <clears throat> In my demonstration, I was using OData-based uh, entities as endpoints for pushing data into Dynamics 365 as well as receiving data from D365. When it comes to AX, we use the application integration framework. And so um, that's how we maintain our, our footprint outside and without introducing any uh, force customization. Okay, one last question here at the moment. Um, where would you, where would it be set up uh, if a customer wanted, for example, an electronic invoice instead of paper or email invoice? Okay, so the question is where would it be set up? And I think that um, maybe the nature of the question is that where in AX do I make that definition of of how do I say, okay, this customer is no longer receiving paper versus uh, an electronic document. So um, let's start with the paper. In, in AX, you can change the, the, you know, basically the invoice format and output based on the customer. So you would disable the, the, the paper generation process. That would be step one. And step two is you would come to Vantage Point 
which is connected that, you know, watching D365, and you would go to your partner, in my case, Amazon, and there are two things that control it. The first is um, the fact that it's a customer. The second, that the Dynamics 365 ID, in my case, is US-007, and that there is an invoice defined here in the trading partner documents that are being exchanged with my partner. So those three things is what drives the quote setup. So if I come back here to Amazon, you can see that, um, let's go back to the grid. You'll see that in the grid that they are US 007. Now if you have sub accounts, for example, order accounts, Vantage Point will work based on the ship to, it'll um, recognize that each delivery location or the ones that do have a different customer ID is identified and, um, and leverage that information. So that's just an example of how simple it is to relate the, the data that's in D365 into this EDI context. Because that, you know, Amazon, they may have multiple delivery locations, they don't see themselves as separate customers. They see themselves as one organization with multiple chip twos. But you can you have the flexibility to do it any way that you want. So you could have multiple customers for Amazon or not. And um, so it's all connected through these uh, relationships that I just mentioned. So very simple. Again, no changes in D365. All right. I'm just going to do one more check here. So. I don't see any other questions, so we can begin wrapping up. Um, well, thank you, everyone in the audience for all those questions. Really appreciate it. And, Glenn, thank you uh, once again for taking the time today. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. All right. And uh, we have recorded today's event. We'll be uh, sharing information on that uh, in the near future. And we will conclude today's event. Have a great day, everybody.